Hello again, here's yet another video on Magic Roads and this time I'm talking about how to integrate Ordnance Survey benchmark elevation data into your workflow when you're making a ride. Previously I've talked about different route planning software and how the elevation data are derived when you plot your, your route and I'd recommend using Strava Route Planner for that. Strava Route Planner is very accurate but sometimes you might want to use your own ride or someone else's ride which has been plotted with a GPS unit but one which has a parametric altimeter in it and which plots the elevation more accurately. Now here I've got my own ride from Pitt and Weem to St Andrews and you may have seen this before and I'm just going to look at the elevation data which is generally quite good here um, and compare it to the Ordnance Survey benchmark data. So I've already had a look so I'm going to just zoom into a few select corners. Here's one. So if we look here my elevation is 60 meters and I can click here and see the exact elevation 60.98. And if I go to the Ordnance Survey uh, benchmark data, and this is a map of all the Ordnance Survey benchmarks. There are many thousands of them, uh, 500,000 they say, uh, and only 190 are still maintained. So their fundamental benchmarks are still maintained. Uh, but here's a map which includes uh, these data, and I'll just see if I can find here we are, here's the corner that I'm looking at, and that's 54.398 meters. And what I can do is I can look at the Excel sheet that um, the Ordnance Survey have, has supplied. And if I just go back to the, there uh, it's Ovenstone House, West Angle, Northwest Space. So let's, uh, that's where the, so Ovenstone House, West, Hang. Let's see. Oops, spelt house wrong. Really. Okay, here we are. We've got that. It's come up, and we see the height above ground is 0 0.6 meters, and the height is 54 meters. So, um, 50, uh, 53.7977. And if I bring up my calculator here, if I take my elevation and subtract the actual elevation according to the Ordnance Survey benchmark data, I get a correction factor of 7.17. Now, is that correct for the whole ride? Well, let's have a look. So if I zoom out and here we are. I know there's one here because I've already looked at it. So I'm going to click maybe here and I've got 182 meters. I don't think that's the same as what I, I clicked on earlier when I just tried to do this video before. Uh, but um, I can zoom out, find that Ordnance Survey benchmark. Here we are. So that's 175 meters. So if I introduce my correction factor on my file, I'll get a different elevation. So whatever I have here, let's just see where exactly that is. That's roughly the same point, 182 minus seven. Um, so that's uh, 175. Now let's just see that benchmark. So here we are, you can see my little man standing on Google Street View and the elevation um, benchmark was titled Cooper 10 Rail 7. So I can find that on the um, here. Cooper 10 Crail 7. I'll show you that in a second. It's 40 centimeters from the ground, so you need to factor that in. So that's 175.05, so 174.65. Um, and uh, Here it is, Cooper 10 Crail 7. So let's see. So where's Cooper 10 Crail 7? Well, that looks like a distance marker. So let's have a look at the distance marker and let's zoom in. So here we are. We've got Cooper 10 Crail 7. And below that on the face, you've got a horizontal line and three 
an, an arrow, basically three straight lines, an arrowhead uh, facing into it. And that's the mark that the they've made. That's a cut mark of an Ordnance Survey benchmark. And there's another one we can see on this ride. I forget where it is. Um, I haven't looked at all of them. So that's as far as I've got on this ride. So um, I know there's, there are some discrepancies later on, and I may end up stitching several rides together to match the Ordnance Survey data. Um, but we'll see where I get to. Uh, let's go to another ride where, where I've used this. And here's Talakum Hill. Uh, which is um, one of the 100 greatest climbs that Samir is doing as well. Um, and I've ridden this uh, a long time ago. And what I did was I came from this direction all the way down, down to Woolacoom, turned round here, and then went back up the hill. And this is the ride up the hill. And I stopped here. So uh, that because I got to the top of the hill and a little bit past it. So I went back down and uh, that's slightly problematic because if I look at my um, Ordnance Survey benchmarks, they've got one right at the end, the uh, West Side Roadway Corn. Now, let's see. We see anywhere where this might be, where the benchmark might be. And we can't, I can't really see it. Uh, it's quite difficult to see. Um, so this is the corner at the, before you get to Chalicombe Hill. And um, the road goes up before it goes down the hill. And it's quite difficult to tell from Google Street Map with how far up it goes. But we know this is 174 point something. So the top of the hill is going to be higher than that. And then here's the top of the hill. And then further down is the other benchmark. Uh, let's have a look again to see where that is. So here's one at 174.876 and here's one at 155.625. Let's go down to that benchmark. Let's keep going. Um, I just passed it. No, I don't think I passed it. It's a little further. I have passed it. Must be here. So Daisy. Oh, I'm lost. Ah, oh, here it is. Here it is. So here's the benchmark, it's somewhere here. And we can see how it's described. Uh, it's described as national benchmark wall, north side gateway, southwest side road. So it's the north side of the gateway on the southwest side of the road, and it's 155 meters above sea level. So here you can see, I think the road is going to be higher than the benchmark. If we look in our little um, in our Excel sheet. So it was, I've totally forgotten already. Wall, north side, gateway, southwest side. So let's try wall, north side, gateway, southwest side. Okay, so we can see that's 30 centimetres above the ground and it's 155.6248 metres. So I've got two benchmarks which I can correct my ride to, but one of them it doesn't go to. Now, what I had to do was I had to take my beginning ride, I had to take the um, elevation here, see what the correction factor is, see how far above it was above, above 174 it was and correct the whole ride down and then see if this matched and uh, so as you can see this now matches let's look at that uh, 156.9 and the one before is 155.3 now I think I've overcorrected this because I think this benchmark was uh, 
slightly lower than the road. Uh, I can't see this benchmark. Um, and the other thing I have to take into account was this is not, uh, this whole track was not done uh, at the same time as the elevation was recorded at this this time. So I came down here, went all the way down the hill, then back up the hill. And so this was elevation was recorded before I went back up the hill. So if you remember from my previous video, if you if you care about these things and if you watched the previous video, um, we had Egan Bernal riding around the Champs Elysees and the Place de la Concorde and over the eight laps, the elevation dropped. And that was the bar barometric altimeter changing as he rode round. And despite this, it's still the most accurate way to record elevation uh, for us at the moment. Uh, so there could well have been a change between this elevation being recorded and this elevation up here being recorded. So uh, I have actually got another file where I've slightly reduced the correction factor. And uh, what does that give us? That gives us a um, top of the hill around here. Uh, this is the previous file where I've slightly overcorrected of uh, 178 meters. We'll come to it soon. Here we are, 178 meters at the top of Chalakum Hill and down here at the corner, exactly the same as the Ordnance Survey benchmark, 174 meters. How does that compare to other data? Well, if we look at Velo Viewer, Chalakum Hill, maximum elevation 235 meters. So that's derived from the Strava base map. Uh, we could um, quickly plot it in Strava. Um, Explore, uh, you would go to um, My Routes and then create a new route. Oh, we've got one here, haven't we? Let's have a look. So the top in Strava is 178. Okay, so that's interesting. So it's not the same as Veloview. I think Veloview is probably using out of date. Um, uh, data and the Strava has been corrected with user data. It hits 179 at, at some point here uh, and I think that's what my corrected file would reach. Um, so what you'll find is Strava data is sometimes very very accurate and sometimes it falls down a little bit as we saw, saw on my previous um, previous video. Let's see what happens here. I've just put in my last points. Uh, 175.7 is, uh, this is GPS Visualizer using best available source. So a combination of shuttle radar topography mission, ASTA, and actually that's all they have really, uh, ODP-1 Western Europe as well. So that's, um, this is the last point on my ride at 175.7, so 176 meters. So uh, all of these correlate pretty well. Um, so we've got, so I think now that we've got good correlation between everything, we can uh, safely assume that my correction factors have been fairly accurate. And this just demonstrates why you can't always use one source for your elevation data, um, because this is a 235 meter maximum elevation, uh, which isn't correct. Uh, we've got multiple sources that agree. Uh, we can also look at um, uh, Google's, uh, this site uses the Google uh, Maps API to um, use Google elevation data, which is different to ASTAR SRTM. It uses a combination of um, sources. Uh, I don't think we know the precise sources that make up the Google elevation base map. But here I can click 174 meters, that's at the site of the um, benchmark, and here 155. So it may be they've used Ordnance Survey data in here. But if I plot up here, uh, I think uh, I'm looking 177, it goes up to 176, 176, 175. Okay, that seems to, 
to fairly reliably um, correlate with with how the hill is. Um, and the only real way to really know is to ride it, because as I say, you can't the perspective on um, Google Street View. Uh, you you do get an idea of which you know, obviously you can see that's down here. Now is that flat uphill or it was uphill? I think here. I think that's flat actually. I think it's more flattish, maybe a slight incline, and then it turns downwards. But you can't really tell which is up, which is down, depend because of the viewpoint of the uh, the Google car that's run this. Anyway, so really we've got. Uh, you can see I was looking at my Senon ride as well. Uh, we we've got a huge number of base ba benchmarks, which they're all out of date. Um, and some may not exist anymore, and some may well have shifted in their elevation. But uh, the 190 fundamental base marks, benchmarks that um, Ordnance Survey use, uh, they were positioned in areas of bedrock which weren't likely to move, um, or buildings that weren't likely to be pulled down. Um, by the way, these are all related to a um, point in Newlyn. Um, which is the Ordnance Survey's um, uh, primary point of elevation data. So uh, I think this is really quite useful to just check your elevations on your rides. Uh, this is after you've cleaned up your ride using all the other tools I've shown, but really useful to do that. And um, I hope this is helpful for you. And um, thanks for listening.